Erica Johnson. 1M. Shared with Public. Salem's Lot, The New Curse. Episode 1, The Shadows Return. Scene 1, The Arrival. The episode opens with a slow pan across the small town of Jerusalem's Lot, now a sleepy New England community that has largely forgotten its dark history. The sun sets, casting long shadows over the aging buildings and the dense woods surrounding the town. A black SUV rolls into town, driven by Aaron King, mid-forties, rugged, with graying hair and a hard, haunted expression, a former journalist turned true crime author. Beside him sits his teenage daughter, Emma, 17, sharp-witted, with dark curly hair and a serious demeanor, staring out the window, visibly unenthusiastic about their new home. Emma, sighing, Dad, why did we have to move to this ghost town? It's creepy. Aaron, it's not a ghost town, M. It's a fresh start. They pull up to a large, old house at the edge of town, a Victorian-era mansion with peeling paint and an overgrown yard. Aaron steps out, looking at the house as though it holds the key to his future, while Emma lingers behind, clearly unsettled. Scene 2, Unpacking the Past. Inside the house, Aaron sets down his boxes and starts unpacking. He picks up an old newspaper clipping about the mysterious disappearances in Salem's lot from years ago. The headlines read, Vanishing Shadows, Salem's Lot's Unsolved Mysteries. Aaron is drawn to the town's dark past, planning to write his next book on it. Emma, meanwhile, explores the house on her own. She enters the basement and finds a dusty, cobweb-covered window that lets in a faint trickle of light. As she brushes away the dust, she hears a strange scraping sound behind her. Emma, whispering, Dad? She turns, but no one's there. The sound stops. She shakes it off and leaves, closing the basement door behind her. Scene 3, The Town's New Faces. Aaron and Emma head into town the next day to meet some of the locals. They stop at Maureen's Diner, a small, cozy spot with checkered floors and faded photos of the town from decades ago. Behind the counter is Maureen, late fifties, silver-haired, with a kind but cautious look in her eyes, who greets them warmly. Maureen, you must be the new folks in town. Not many move to Salem's lot these days. Aaron, smiling, yeah, we're hoping to find some peace and quiet here. I'm Aaron, and this is my daughter, Emma. Maureen's smile falters for a moment, her gaze flickering to the dark woods visible through the diner window. Maureen, quietly, careful what you hope for. Aaron, curious, is something wrong? Maureen, hesitant, this town, it's got a history. Best to keep your head down and stay close to the light, if you catch my meaning. Emma, sarcastic, great, dad. A haunted town. Just what we needed. Scene 4, The Return of the Dark. That night, as Aaron sits at his desk, poring over old notes and newspaper clippings, the wind begins to howl outside. The windows rattle in their frames, and the lights flicker. Aaron glances up from his work, momentarily distracted, but shakes it off. In her room, Emma is scrolling through her phone when she hears a faint scratching at her window. She looks up to see the dark silhouette of a figure standing just outside, staring at her through the glass. Her heart races, and she jumps up to investigate. Emma, whispering, hello? She cautiously opens the window and looks out. The figure is gone. Confused, she closes it again and steps back, feeling a chill run down her spine. Emma, okay, that was weird. As she settles back into bed, she notices something strange in the reflection of her mirror, shadowy figures moving across the yard. Her eyes widen, but when she turns to look, they've disappeared into the night. Scene 5, Aaron's Research. The next day, Aaron meets with Father Callahan, late sixties, grizzled and weary, with piercing blue eyes, the town's priest, who survived the horrors of the original events in Salem's lot. Callahan has aged, but the scars of his experiences run deep. Aaron, I'm writing a book about the disappearances here. There's not much on record, but there's a lot of rumor. Vampires, people say. Callahan, grimly, people say a lot of things. But some of it's true. This town's been cursed for a long time. Aaron, cursed? By what? Callahan, evil. It doesn't die, Aaron. It slumbers. 
and when the time is right, it wakes. Scene 6, The First Attack. That night, while Emma is walking home from a late study session at the local library, she cuts through the old cemetery, a shortcut most locals avoid. As she passes by the ancient gravestones, she hears a low growl behind her. She turns to see a pair of glowing red eyes staring at her from the shadows. Panic sets in, and she starts to run, but the creature moves impossibly fast. It steps into the moonlight, revealing the gaunt, pale figure of a man with sharp fangs and blood-stained lips, a vampire. Emma, screaming, help. She trips and falls, the vampire closing in on her, its breath cold and foul. Just as it reaches out to grab her, a figure rushes out of the darkness, Father Callahan armed with a wooden cross. The vampire hisses, recoiling from the holy symbol. Callahan, get back, creature. Emma scrambles to her feet and runs as Callahan holds the vampire at bay. Scene 7, Confrontation with the Past. Aaron, furious and worried about Emma's close encounter, confronts Father Callahan the next morning at the church. Aaron, you said evil was slumbering. Well, it's awake now. My daughter was almost killed. Callahan, it started again. The vampires are returning. Aaron, then we have to stop them. I won't let this happen to my family. Callahan, firmly, you don't understand, Aaron. This isn't just about one vampire. This town is their nest, and they're coming back in numbers. Scene 8, The Old House Revealed. Aaron returns home, shaken. He begins investigating the house they've moved into, uncovering old records that link the property to Hubert Mars 10, the infamous figure from the original Salem's Lot tragedy. Marston's old journal, hidden in the walls, details his descent into madness and his connection to the dark forces that plagued the town. Aaron, reading aloud, the shadows speak to me, they promise eternal life, but at a cost. A town cursed, forever. Emma overhears and shudders, her fear growing as she realizes their new home might be tied to the town's dark history. Scene 9, Emma's Discovery. As Emma digs deeper into the history of Salem's Lot, she stumbles upon old family photographs buried in the attic. One picture, in particular, stands out a faded photo of the Mars 10 family, including a child who bears an eerie resemblance to Emma herself. Emma, whispering, what the hell? The camera zooms in on her shocked face as the pieces of the puzzle begin to fall into place. The past is connected to the present in more ways than they ever realized. Scene 10, The Darkness Rises. The episode ends with a chilling scene. In the dead of night, a fog rolls into the town, thick and unnatural. From the shadows of the woods, pale, gaunt figures, vampires, emerge, their red eyes glowing in the darkness. The town, unaware of the danger creeping toward them, remains silent and still, but the vampires are on the move. As they approach the King House, the camera focuses on Aaron and Emma asleep, oblivious to the horror closing in. To be continued. Salem's Lot, The New Curse. Episode 2, Night Terrors. Scene 1, The Invasion Begins. The night deepens as the vampires move silently through the town, their pale faces hidden in the fog. Inside the King House, Aaron and Emma remain asleep, unaware of the creeping danger. The camera shifts to the front yard, where the vampires prowl around the house. One of them, taller and more menacing, with blood dripping from its fangs, reaches for the front door, its fingers unnaturally long and bony. With a subtle click, the door swings open. Inside, Emma's phone buzzes, the light flashing in the darkness. She groggily wakes up, glancing at the message. It's from a classmate. Text, you okay? Heard weird stuff in the woods. She frowns, about to reply, when she hears soft footsteps in the hallway. Thinking it's her dad, she calls out. Emma, Dad. You still up? No response. Suddenly, a soft, eerie hissing sound comes from the living room. Emma's eyes widen, and she instinctively reaches for the small cross necklace hanging around her neck. Something isn't right. Scene 2, The Warning. Aaron jerks awake, sensing a presence in the house. He grabs a flashlight from the bedside table and cautiously moves into the hallway. He hears the faint sound of whispering from downstairs. His heart pounds as he descends the stairs, 
his flashlight beam sweeping across the darkened living room. Aaron, who's there? A shadow flickers in the corner of his eye. He swings the light toward it, revealing a gaunt figure standing in the corner, one of the vampires. Its glowing red eyes lock onto him, and it lets out a low growl. Aaron stumbles back, grabbing the first object he can find, a heavy lamp, and swings it at the creature. The lamp shatters against its head, but the vampire doesn't flinch. Instead, it lunges at him, fangs bared. Before it can reach Aaron, Father Callahan bursts through the front door, armed with a large crucifix. Callahan, back to the shadows, demon. The vampire recoils from the cross, hissing in fury. Callahan forces it toward the open door, and with one final shriek, the vampire vanishes into the night. Scene 3, Unanswered Questions. After the attack, Aaron and Emma sit in the kitchen with Father Callahan. The air is tense, fear gripping them both. Aaron, angrily, what the hell was that thing? You said this place was cursed, but you didn't say vampires would break into my house. Callahan, I tried to warn you. They're back. Stronger than before. The darkness that plagued this town is rising again, and it's going to get worse. Emma, shaken, how do we stop them? Are they, are they coming for us? Callahan, serious, they're coming for everyone. But there are ways to fight back. It won't be easy, and not everyone will make it. Aaron, tell me what to do. Callahan leans forward, locking eyes with Aaron. Callahan, we need to find the source. The original evil that brought the vampires here. If we destroy it, they'll lose their power. Scene 4, Unearthly Allies. The next day, Aaron, Emma, and Father Callahan visit Maureen's diner again, this time seeking more information. Maureen, wiping down the counter, watches them approach, her face grim. Maureen, so, you've seen them too. Callahan nods, his expression equally serious. Callahan, they've returned, just as we feared. Maureen, quietly, I thought we were done with all that, after so many years. But nothing in this town stays buried for long. Aaron, do you know anything that could help us? About the source of all this? Maureen hesitates, looking around the diner to make sure no one's listening. Maureen, there's an old story, one the townsfolk don't like to talk about. Back in the day, before the first vampires came, there was a man. A dark sorcerer who made a deal with forces no one could understand. They say he's the one who cursed this town. His spirit still haunts the land. Emma, curious, where is he buried? Maureen, grim, the Mars 10 house. That's where it all began. Scene 5, the Mars 10 house. At sunset, Aaron, Emma, and Father Callahan stand at the base of the hill where the Mars 10 house looms, its crumbling structure casting long shadows over the landscape. The house, long abandoned, still radiates a sense of malevolent energy. Emma, nervous, are we really going in there? It looks like it's about to collapse. Callahan, it's the only way to find the answers we need. Aaron, stay close. We don't know what's waiting for us inside. The group enters the house, the floorboards creaking under their weight. Dust and cobwebs cling to every surface, and the air is thick with the scent of decay. As they move deeper into the house, they find themselves drawn to the basement, where they uncover an old stone door hidden behind a bookshelf. Callahan, this wasn't here before. With a heave, Aaron pushes the door open, revealing a dark tunnel descending into the earth. Scene 6, The Crypt. They descend into the tunnel, torches lighting their way. The walls are lined with ancient carvings, depicting dark rituals and figures surrounded by shadowy shapes. Emma lingers behind, fascinated by the eerie artwork. Aaron, whispering, this has to be it, the source of the curse. They finally reach the end of the tunnel, where a large stone crypt stands. The crypt door bears the name Hubert Mars 10. Father Callahan raises his crucifix, ready to confront whatever lies inside. Callahan, this is it. Whatever we're looking for, it's behind this door. Scene 7, The Unholy Awakening. As they push open the crypt door, the stench of death fills the air. Inside lies a stone coffin, cracked and covered in ancient symbols. Callahan steps forward, his hand trembling slightly as he places the crucifix on the coffin. 
Callahan, in the name of God. Before he can finish, the ground begins to rumble, and the coffin lid slides open. From within, the skeletal figure of Hubert Marsten emerges, his eyes glowing with a dark, unnatural light. Hubert, whispering, you dare disturb my rest. The room grows cold as Hubert's voice echoes through the crypt. He raises a hand, and shadowy tendrils begin to form, reaching toward the group. Aaron, run. Scene 8, a desperate escape. They turn and sprint down the tunnel as the tendrils chase after them, growing faster and more aggressive. Emma stumbles, but Aaron grabs her hand, pulling her along. Callahan stays behind for a moment, holding the shadows at bay with his crucifix. Callahan, go. I'll hold him off. Aaron, no, we're not leaving you. Callahan, you have to destroy the source. Find a way. The shadows engulf Callahan, his scream echoing through the tunnel as the others barely manage to escape. Scene 9 Regrouping. Back at the house, Aaron and Emma are shaken but alive. Emma paces the room, terrified. Emma, Dad, what are we supposed to do now? He's too powerful. Aaron, determined, we find another way. We can't let this thing win. We'll destroy it, just like Callahan said. Emma, but how? Callahan's gone, and we barely made it out alive. Aaron, we'll find something. We have to. Scene 10, the darkness spreads. The final scene shows the town of Salem's lot, now shrouded in fog and darkness. Vampires begin to emerge from the shadows, taking over the streets and attacking unsuspecting residents. Screams echo through the night as the camera pans up to the full moon. The episode ends with a close-up of Hubert Mars 10 standing atop a hill, his red eyes glowing with malevolent glee as his army of vampires grows. Hubert, whispering, the lot is mine once more. To be continued. Like. Comment. Share.